This is Stephen Huber. I'll be the one running through the slides today. Uh, the subject of today's review, as Red touched on, is the lander primary structure, uh, which, which we're embarked to build, test, and deliver a report about uh, to NASA in July. Uh, I'm now looking at slide six. Um, here there's a large image which represents the test configuration of the primary structure. Um, you'll notice color-coded labeled objects that are mass simulators to represent the pieces that won't be flight hardware in the test. Uh, so you'll see things like tanks, you'll see a rover on top, um, some payload that's mounted underneath the deck, as Red mentioned, that's in blue. Um, and those are things that we'll be bolting up that represent masses and center of gravities for parts that we won't actually build. Uh, everything in gold and white is the stuff that we construct that's uh, the primary load paths for the structure to survive launch loads. Uh, this is an overview of the schedule milestones. Uh, so we embarked on this structure design, build, and test in mid-December. Um, a review of configuration took place a month ago. Uh, we're now down to part level detailed design, so every part that we'll build for the primary structure uh, is reasonably detailed. Uh, within the next two and a half weeks, we'll have drawings out for each part to shops. Uh, manufacturing will be commencing as those are delivered. Um, around uh, beginning of May, we'll begin the assembly uh, here at CMU, and we'll ship uh, to the test site in mid-June and test in the last few weeks of June for submitting the report in mid-July, which is uh, two weeks before the deadline. I'm going to give a quick overview of the lander configuration, uh, why we look the way we look. Uh, so moving on to slide 13. Uh, so when we configured this spacecraft, uh, we configured it around uh, structural requirements. Uh, as we mentioned, it's a 2,500 kilogram craft. Uh, the structure must support that mass during launch, cruise, and landing. Um, surviving launch means to be very stiff. Uh, we have to ha maintain minimum natural frequencies that preclude uh, coupling of our spacecraft shaking with the Falcon 9. Um, it also means being able to survive random vibration, which creates uh, stress on the structure. Uh, so this is a vibration table. Um, it's the facility that we're intending is Boeing Satellite Test Facility in El Segundo. Uh, this will be done on shake tables and includes modal surveys. Uh, which will compare with our analysis model and tell us if the natural frequencies that we got out of the test match up with what we expected from our analysis. Um, it'll also do random vibration tests uh, that ensure that we'll survive launch. It also ensures that the workmanship's good. So for example, if there's a weld that's not very good, uh, you might notice um, failures there. Uh, is this the only shape test you're going to do, or are you planning another system level shape test later on down the road when you actually have uh, this is the 100-day uh, war build and shake, and uh, before flight, we'll uh, uh, shake and vac and uh, mm -hmm. uh, go the distance. Moving on to slide 13. Uh, the, the starting point of structure design um, is the Falcon 9 adapter. Uh, this is a Marmon clamp. Uh, which clamps concentrically about a ring at the base of our spacecraft. Uh, you can also see an image of us inside of the Falcon 9 fairing um, on the right. Uh, so you can see that we're fairly wide. We're up out somewhat near the walls of the fairing, although with considerable margins so that we're not going to hit anything. Uh, so now looking at slide 16, um, this is showing the evolution of our design. Uh, as I mentioned, we have four heavy tanks. We have one main thruster that's in the center. Uh, it's a fixed thruster that provides the majority of our actual thrust. Uh, there are also eight thrusters that are on the periphery, and these provide stability um, and attitude control during flight. Now moving on to slide 17, um, you'll see that we have a rover that rides on top, uh, which is our uh, mobile day together once we're on the surface. Um, slide 19. Um, shows the completed thing. So this, this adds on secondary structure. There are now ramps, there are legs. Um, so moving on to slide 21, you see some of the configurations that we explored. Um, so the key idea here, again, is transmit those loads from the big masses in the tank um, down to the adapter ring. Uh, this was also a first look that we could get at stresses in the plate. Um, you'll notice that predominantly, again, it's blue, uh, very low stress. 
And there are a few stress concentrations um, that, were that we designed out uh, just by adding a little bit more material in the areas. Um, so that, that's what I've highlighted here, just where those stress concentrations are. They're nothing scary. Um, they're in places that make sense. Slide 30. Um, this is a, a look at the thermal design. Uh, this was performed in thermal desktop. Uh, so again, as I mentioned, uh, thermal is a huge challenge on the moon with surface temperatures reaching 120 degrees Celsius. Uh, and the deck surface here is where the avionics are directly mounted. So it's the temperature there that matters. Um, our maximum design target uh, was 45 degrees Celsius at the hottest part of the day. Uh, which is where we're at right now with 500 watts of total power um, running continuously. Uh, so this is right on our design target with, without margin. Um, the margin can be achieved by reducing power as it gets hotter during the day. So if you were to drop down by 50 or 100 watts um, during the hottest parts of the day, uh, you could alleviate this concern. Uh, we're very much a stiffness-driven design. Um, so while uh, titanium is stronger, uh, it's not significantly stiffer um, when you're at it. You get more th stiffness by doing things like adding thickness than you do by uh, going from aluminum to titanium. Uh, it also adds a lot of increased time to machine and cost to machine titanium. So we're talking about 6061. Uh, someone might say, well, why are you using 6061? This is aerospace. Why don't you use things like aluminum lithium or 7075, which are much stronger? Um, or lighter. Uh, and again, we're stiffness driven, not strength driven, and uh, mass savings for something like aluminum lithium are fairly small, uh, might be less than 5%. And uh, we have margin, we're not counting grams, so uh, go with the thing that's available that we can get on short order and can machine easily that shops have all used before. Yeah. All right, uh, looking at slide 35, um, this is the look at the deck. Um, this is the underside that's pictured in the large image. Uh, one thing that you'll notice is there's a horizontal stripe across the middle of it, um, and that is a weld seam. Uh, the reason for that is that we're working with two plates uh, that are 5 foot by 10 foot, uh, welding them together to create a 10 foot by 10 foot deck. Uh, this would be done with a stir weld. Um, there's an image in the lower left that shows what a stir weld is. Uh, essentially, that's something that looks like a mill bit. Uh, you spin it up at high speed and you run it down the seam of two plates. Uh, that plasticizes the material and forms one plate. Um, so that's, that's one thing that we're looking at. There's not significant stress in the region, uh, which is so it sh it, we should have some forgiveness in how uh, good the quality is in that weld, but it, it's something that we're intending to do uh, test welds on before actually welding the large part. Uh, this is something that will be done by CTC. I'll talk a little bit more about where things are happening. Uh, but it's somebody who's, who's done stir welding. Uh, do you need to purchase stir weld there, or can you go with a conventional arc weld? Uh, I, I'm not sure I heard that, Mike, but uh, if it comes to a conventional arc weld, uh, I wouldn't hesitate a moment in mm -hmm. uh, gas welding it. Well, purchase, I mean, purchase stir weld. from your comment is that we will do it right and unquestionably there will be a development program no matter which way we go and a testing program no matter which way we go and uh, a great uh, record and reporting no matter which way we go in part because that's the purpose of the exercise. <laughs> 